have a turbo mounted. I just tacked a quick little bracket and hung the turbo kind of where I want it. I wanted to try to keep it low so the heat's kind of out of the engine bay. It's a little down, down low, kind of evacuates the heat underneath the car. And it keeps the center of gravity lower and I can keep the weight further back. Uh, I thought down low would be fun. So if I've done top mount stuff, I haven't done a bottom mount or mid mount, whatever you want to call this. Still be plenty of space between my turbo drain. This is, the housing is clocked at the wrong angle, but that's because it doesn't matter yet. I only care about the exhaust housing right now. So this can spin. It's just loose right now. So I can figure out where I want that. And then down the road, I'll actually clock the housing so that this flange is down and my drain tube can go into the pan. But it's high enough where I'm not gonna need a scavenge pump to pump it back into the pan if you put your turbo too low, that could be a problem. So kind of trying to pick the middle ground here. It'll be a little tight to get a downpipe through here, but I want to start making the manifold this the next time. Um, I made the collector, which I had modeled up uh, just to figure out where to cut in the mill. I started tacking some stuff up yesterday, and then I started with number three, because it was going to be the most difficult um, to give myself space for the other runners and to try to get some length into it. I'm not shooting for like perfect equal length on this, but uh, I do kind of want to try a little bit, so I didn't want this to go directly into one of the runners. So if I can keep this one low, I think number five will be this one, which I can come up and over, kind of keep it nice and pretty and uh, parallel here, and then kind of work my way over there. And then I'll do the same with number four, because I'm also going for a circular firing order. So firing order on this is one, two, four, five, three. So I wanted to keep that in a pattern circularly here. And then for the wastegate, we've got this 38 millimeter tile. The most important thing about getting is getting like good wastegate priority. And that's having the two where it's coming off the manifold being in the flow path for the wastegate. So this being on the outside of an elbow here, if I cut a notch into that, will give me the direct flow path. So all of the hot exhaust gases coming through the manifold will want to go that direction. You know, you always see them at like a 90 or something like that. And that's when you run into boost creep issues and you lose control of the wastegate. Just because there's no incentive for the exhaust gases to come out the wastegate. So kind of the process I'm going through on all these, this is just a little short piece that I had already cut, but it's gonna work out nice. But I'll cut them all on the bandsaw, I'll mark it on these straight sections. I'll usually put it on the bench this way. I find some way to hold the Sharpie up against it and spin it. So that way my cut mark all the way around it is even. So I'll do that all the way around, then I'll cut it on the bandsaw, and then we'll true it up on the belt sander, and then bevel it so we can get nice well penetration. And then once I get back over to the bench, we have a deburring tool. I'll take the burrs out of the inside and then I'll scotch bright the outside. And that's what I'm doing with each and every piece for the manifold.
thinking about this project, how do you kind of like map it out in your head to it's just like make it work? It's one of those like it can be daunting, but like I know I have like 900 things left to do, but it's kind of like if I, I start to get to that point, I'll make like a list of uh, what I have left to do. And then like, if I feel like I'm making no progress on that and that's daunting too, you just start making, break each item up on the list into smaller items so you can at least start checking stuff off. Like, weld this corner. And I'm like, all right, I got something done, you know? It's one of those things like, if it's just an hour a day, every day, eventually you'll get there. We talked about like wastegate priority at some point, but this is kind of coming off at this gradual area here. So all the flows coming down that tube and hitting that back wall of that elbow. I shouldn't have any issues with boost creep. I'm also gonna recircuit back in. So the downpipe comes out under the turbo right below that. Uh, this is still loose, but I can just come out with the other V-band flange and a little, I've got a little uh, expansion joint and then come in with another little chunk of tube into the downpipe. We'll figure that out once we start doing exhaust things. Next thing I actually have to do is pull the cross member and then clearance it around the turbo. It's like right up against it. The stock motor mounts have a little like foot that goes underneath so that you can't, if you break a motor mount, it doesn't pull up and like lift up on the motor there. But this is a different style of mount and I'm not using stock mounts anymore. So this can go away. I can clearance this back a little bit because I can't clock the compressor housing right now. It's clocks into the subframe and it's part of where the old motor mount used to go so i'm going to cut that area off and then i can clock the turbo and start figuring out some of the cold side piping Next thing step for the manifold is to finish weld it, which is kind of going to take it back out, split each runner off individually, weld it completely, then put it all back together and weld it to the flange and the collector again. Because otherwise it's hard to get in between all these little nooks and crannies here. I like to try to leave access to all of the fasteners because a manifold, like you see that a lot with tubular manifolds where you can't get to a couple and you either have to use a box wrench and it takes forever to get the nut or bolt in or something crazy. So all of these are accessible with Normal hand tools, you don't have to do any of them with a box wrench. I can get a ratchet in on all of them. A um, couple of them I have to put a quarter drive down into here, but I can get it and it's not a big deal. So I have a good amount of them with a swivel on the impact I can get out.
we have two halves of the manifold. So the whole process, you know, we saw I tacked it all up in the car, figured out all my bends, kind of had that figured out, pulled it out, welded as much of it as I could without taking it apart. Then I cut it apart at the collector, welded each tube individually. I, I cut it off the flange too. Um, then that way I can like get to the backside of everything. Sometimes there's another tube right behind where you're going to be welding and I'm not the best welder in the little tight areas. So for me, it's better to just cut it apart, make sure I can see everything, weld it up nice, put it back on, weld it back up again. I welded the collector from the outside all the way around and then from the inside as well, because you can't get to the, the star bit from the back of this anymore. The shape is just kind of, like, you don't want to really tight bend. You want to use all these little elbows. So I'm not cheating any of them. They're all tangent is what we'd call it from an engineering perspective. But for this manifold, I did um, circular firing order. So the firing order of the engine works its way around the collector. So that way all the pulses are a lot more even. Also, they're all equal length so that they're timed correctly and then they're evenly spaced throughout that collector. With a turbo manifold, equal length doesn't really make that big of a difference. Supposedly the circular firing order and smoothing those pulses out can make a difference. I've never tried it before, but it seemed interesting. So I tried both. This is the back part of the collector. You can do collectors a, a number of different ways. I could have cut these longer and used tube all the way. I wanted to try one of these kind of bell mouth things. So it's a taper, fits nice. Uh, this is for the turbo here, this outlet, and then this is the wastegate. So as far as wastegate priority goes, that's kind of a big deal. So you want the, the flow of the manifold to be prioritized towards the wastegate. So that's just a valve that's, you know, what's regulating your boost. So it's shut when you're trying to build boost and when you're at your target boost level, the wastegate opens and dumps off some pressure that way away from the turbo. That's how you're regulating your, your boost. So the more priority you can give it towards the wastegate, the better control over that boost you'll have. So you see a lot of manifolds that are kind of lower end or poorly designed come off at like a hard angle. So if the wastegate tube came up this way, None of that flow wants to make a hard 90 and go back up. So you have boost creep issues where you can run, you know, a six or seven pound wastegate spring and it'll actually creep to 15 pounds of boost. This way I'll have pretty good control over the boost I actually want. Also, all of this manifold was done back purging. So that's where, you know, the, the torch, I'm doing this all TIG welded, the torch is, has an inert gas, argon, and that's what shields the weld. When you're welding stainless, it's very sensitive to that and the inside of the weld can also require shielding. Otherwise, it, they call it sugaring. It gets like this crystalline structure when oxygen can get to that liquid weld on the backside, it oxidizes. So I back purged all these tubes individually, just kind of aluminum foil on one end and the other end with the tube in it, back feeding it argon that way. So that way the welds are nice inside and out. You want to do that on turbo applications because any of that little crystal stuff, once the manifold gets really hot, you could break off a little bead of that or something, feed it through your turbo. It's just pretty bad practice. And the heat that this manifold is going to go through is pretty extreme. So it'll expand and contract pretty rapidly. So if you have any stress risers from those crystal, crystallized weld regions or whatever on the inside, that'll be where it's going to break. Exhaust. So for the exhaust on this, I'm doing all three inch and it's all stuff we have available on our universal exhaust catalog. So we have a couple different bend options. These are just the ones I have in front of me at the moment, but we have these really nice UJ bend setups here um, for the three inch. We have two and a half and three inch options for all this. We've got some 90s, I believe we have 45s. We've got V bands. And these are the nice V bands that actually have the piloted step in it. So they center when you put them together, unlike the shitty V-bands that kind of walk all over the place. This is the way to go. Uh, comes with clamps. It's the most affordable stuff on the market and it's all 304 stainless and it's really nice to work with. So hard to beat and I'm making all my stuff out of it. But I've gotten from the turbo, I made kind of the downpipe here and then the straight section to a little resonator. I have another resonator I think I'm gonna use instead and move this elsewhere. But uh, starting to piece that together, it's just kind of a pretty simple process of like kind of eyeball where you want to cut it, cut it, test fit it, put things in the belt sander, make sure they're nice and square, and then tack them all together. 
I gotta put the fuel tank back in, in the back before I try any more stuff with the back of the exhaust, which means I have to take the trans back out. So I have to take the trans out, put the fuel tank back in, put the trans back in. Then I wanna put this side suspension at full bump and try to get it above the axle if I can, if there's enough space. Cause I don't wanna bottom out and crush the exhaust or catch a rock off the front tire and damage it or something. That'd be a bummer. So if I could plan ahead and get it all out of the way, I tucked it up pretty high into the tunnel here. Um, that's why I want to change, move this muffler to the back and I have a different resonator I'm going to try to use here that doesn't have a hard edge to catch debris. So I have, you know, coming down from the turbo here, I've got the V-band up here, and I've got my wastegate recirculated in, which was very tight and difficult to do. I went into this small resonator with kind of the, the spun ends on it, so it's not catching stuff. I had that other one that I ended up moving to the back, which you'll see in a second, but that way I'm not gonna catch rocks or dirt or whatever on it. Uh, I used one of the factory hangers here, just kind of welded two tabs on for them, so that's cool. It is touching my subframe here, which I intend on notching. It's like right up against it, which is fine. So, so that doesn't rattle. I can notch the little bit of subframe here. I just wanted to keep as much ground clearance as I could. And then I put it up over the axle here, which is not how 944s normally went, but I don't want to smash the exhaust. You know, I'd have to go under this axle shaft at full droop or near this boot, which would be pretty hot. And then at full compression, if I were to land on something and there were rocks and debris nearby, there's a pretty good chance I could land on that low point, which would be lower than here, which I didn't want. So I decided to go up and over with a little V-band to make it easier than the, what is now my muffler. And I welded on this little bent bracket to use the factory hangers over here too. So, it's exhausted. All right, so that wraps up our episode on the hot side plumbing and fabrication we did for the turbo system. Next up, we're gonna work our way through the cold side and charge piping and some of the cooling system upgrades we did. So make sure you follow along, uh, like and subscribe. Apparently it really does make a difference. This build is changing a lot from where you're seeing it now. So make sure you follow along. There's a bunch of updates you can see on my Instagram. I'm at Mike the Day. And make sure you follow along with ECS as well. That's ECS Tuning on Instagram. Uh, you'll see updates for this build and many others strewn about. So, what are we talking about? Was that your cue? This is already cumbersome. I don't know what to do differently. What did I... What am I doing? <laughs>